Hello guys, welcome, Dom McStraw here and welcome to today's presentation of the Gen X Performance Blueprint. And in today's presentation, we're gonna cover the topic on why we tend to focus on performance and not just the weight loss as our primary driver of setting goals for ourselves and our clients within the program. Let's just jump into this next slide. So the first thing for us to understand is simply what we call the triangle of awareness. Now, for some people, it sounds something sexy, but realistically, it's pretty simple. Let's just go forward. So like a triangle, as you can see here, nice and easy, equilateral triangle, three different sides, three different points. When you're within inside the triangle, you can go in either direction. You can go clockwise and get from point to point, and you can also go anti-clockwise also too. So simple, straightforward, fairly understandable, not a problem. Now we start to not complicate, but we now we start to add what we think are the three main goals that most people want to pursue when it comes to things like their health and fitness, although these cascade into other areas of what it means. Let's have a look at the top. We've got the guy, basketball in this particular case, a sporty type of personality. You get down the bottom right, we've got the, the muscle man, the bodybuilder, let's call it the looks, he wants to look a certain way. And then we've got the nice hourglass there in the bottom left-hand corner. And that's a good representation of, say, time, maybe wanting to live longer. And that's exactly what we do. We have three areas or three points on the triangle of awareness, one being performance, the second being the aesthetic, the look, as you can see here, obviously the bodybuilder is a good representation of that. And then the ability for someone to want to live longer, live a fuller life, and therefore the hourglass is a good representation of that. So again, why do we use the triangle? Well, it's pretty simple. If you think about the points in the triangle, they are the furthest point from one another, okay? So this means, so what you're going to do if you're going to pursue, say, the performance, the basketballer, his athletics, his performance, his ability, it's as far away from being a bodybuilder as you can be. It's also as far away as someone who is in their later years in life, quite sedentary, 80 plus, for example, and then wanting to leave a longer life, less stress. Likewise to the bodybuilder. Yep, as we said, the bodybuilder, again, he is far enough away from the, the athletic guy, right? But he's also the furthest away from the guy who wants to live a longer life and vice versa. And we, we use this triangle of awareness simply to break down what it means and what are the tasks that you've got to undertake to, say, pursue each one of those types of goals. So the question I have here is, is have you ever, ever heard anyone say that they want to perform better and lose fat okay now some people may and and with each one of these there are elements that you can maybe do in parallel but you can't achieve one to its maximum without sacrificing the others now what do we mean by that there and how do these guys differ because at the end of the day they do when we start to include nutrition for example there is fundamentally a big shift Let's have a look at the performance as a goal. So generally, as we said here, it's athletic in nature. When we talk about the food thing, the calories, basically the person is looking to, at a minimum, they want to be opting for maintenance because they're going to be consuming those in the pursuit of that athletic goal. In some cases, they are after a, an actual fact, they're actually after a surplus. So they want to eat a little bit more calories than their body needs as far as what we call basal metabolic rate. And we'll go into that later on. And why? Because they also need some to be stored in for recovery. As far as protein is concerned, it's pretty much tailored to the type of activity. And again, the rule of thumb is between 0.7 grams to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. So if I did the one gram for me at 94 kilos, that's 206 grams per pound based upon my body weight that I would have to consume in a day. Now that's not just 206 grams physical, that's 206 grams of protein. And I'll do another video on that there about what does that mean? For example, like 206 grams of protein when I'm looking at say beef mince, we're talking 
you know, in excess of a kilo of beast mints just to hit that. And there's more on how we can do that better. So things like football, stuff that's got a strength bias, we're probably more at the higher end. We obviously want more protein because it obviously goes down to the breaking the muscles down and rebuilding them. Whereas someone who might be like a distance runner, maybe not necessarily looking at that, they might be on the lower side of their protein. But also too, it looks at things like the fuel source to achieve performance. There are typically three areas. The stored fuel, the stuff that's in your body. So your short sprints, your 3RM fuel, it's based upon our energy system. And that energy system is the ATP PC. Uh, it's, I always forget it and I always fumble up, but basically it's the stored energy within our body. Short, sharp, it's there and it's drawing from them. If I go into like the 400 meter sprint, the CrossFit style activities, we're typically seeing carbs as the preferred energy source. And that's what we talk about, the glycolytic energy system. And then when we start to look at things like marathons, Ironman, stuff where we're on the aerobic threshold, yes, carbs have a big influence. But typically those people, when we're going further and further and further, because we're looking at potentially muscle breakdown, we're looking at fats as their main source of energy. When I jump into aesthetics or the look, I got probably two main areas. One being, let's say, fat loss, I'm not going to call it weight loss. But then there's the there's the muscle gain. So think of the fat loss as someone who wants to lose a few pounds, drop a dress size, you know, pull the belt in a notch or three, and then the muscle gain, i.e., typically the bodybuilder. So in the fat loss game, calories are king, right? We're typically looking at someone going into a calorie deficit to force their body to then to use the stored fats they want to have an adequate protein or out you know intake it's roughly around the gram per pound of body weight and that will depend upon the severity about where the person is within what they would be at their let's say normal weight so when the calorie deficit is properly accounted for the percentage of carbs to fats is relatively insignificant because we're looking at protein being the primary source we then talk about periodizing, so cycling them through the program of staying on the diet, coming off the diet, staying on the diet, and we'll talk about that more later. When we go into muscle gain, at a minimum, these people, we want to be keeping them at maintenance, and to some of them, we actually might even be going over. You'll see this when, when you look at the bodybuilder stage, the Mr. Muscle, the Mr. Olympia type thing. These guys are eating a hell of a lot, but the challenge is this. No amount of direct muscle stimulation, if they're in a deficit, is going to actually lead to what we call hypertrophy or the growth in the muscle. So these guys really are not dieting down. They are controlling their calories. They're controlling them. You see the, the chicken, broccoli, and rice, you know, that, that's being controlled. And, but in this case, protein is definitely king. It's going towards the synthesis of building muscle, repairing muscle, and they're probably at a minimum at the 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. And to some extent, some of these guys will go much further, again, specific to them. Now, whilst we said protein is king, it doesn't really need to be overconsumed, although the school of thought for some people, it, it is. Now, what these people do need to do, whether it's the bodybuilder, the Mr. Olympia, whether it's the bikini uh, chick, then periodical cuts, and that's why you talk about, you hear about them tapering, they're in season, off season, they're going through a cut. That's all in an effort to hopefully stop the body from adapting to things like a lower calorie intake than what their body would need, particularly if they're going down the path of, say, a fat loss period. Then when we come to our longevity, again, things change the game a little tiny bit. There is probably two areas, one being absolute longevity and one being relative longevity within a plan. So I might want to be a runner. I want to keep running into my 60s and 70s, 80s because it's something that I enjoy. And therefore, I'm trying to manage that within the protocol. If I'm looking to simply be at absolute longevity, so I'm older, I'm 85, I want to hit 95, I want to hit 100, then a minor deficit in calories to their maintenance is a good way to start. I still got to keep adequate protein intake and my fuel sources, it's about balancing these fuel sources up. Now, the key thing about longevity is this, at the simplest level, 
Longevity is not something that you do when you've got excessive stress in your life. That includes intense activity. We also want to reduce the inflammation that our body is incurring. Now, that could come from sources of food. So I might have something that gives me gastrointestinal problems. So you're going to find that as you get older, you might find that your diet changes based upon what you've been doing for the last 10, 15 or 20 years. We also, therefore, want to make sure that we're managing our activity. But again, the reason why we say it's within the protocols is not everyone can afford to go and live like a monk and live in a cave and have controlled temperature all year round and just eat what they want to eat without the stresses of just life, day to day, paying the bills, dealing with the kids, etc. So why do I prefer to take myself and my clients down the performance route? Well, the thing here that I, I come across is that the number one challenge is getting people to understand that they need to eat at maintenance. Okay, most people have metabolically adapted, meaning most people have jumped from fad to fad to fad, and they're talking about this 1,000 calories a day. Go and look at BMR anywhere on any calculator. Put your name, put your age, put your height, put your sex, put your weight in, and you're going to be finding at a minimum, you're going to be looking around 13, 14, 15, sometimes 2,000, sometimes even more calories a day. So constantly eating at 1,000 calories a day your body has gone, all right, dude, no problems. It metabolically adapts. It now adjusts what it's doing, the inner workings of your body, to only know that I'm only getting so much fuel. Again, so rule of thumb, you're under eating, you're under eating significantly, and you're still putting on weight. It happens, and it happens a lot. So this is why I don't necessarily want to say to, per to a person who comes to me, I want to lose weight, and I want to go straight into a cut, or a calorie deficit, to me, I want them to get them to understand what it actually means to eat properly. Otherwise, it's going to continue to hinder them forever and ever. Amen. So in layman's terms, this is about what we call reverse dieting, trying to get them to eat a little bit more. Again, good quality, not necessarily more food, but higher quality, more calorie dense, nutrient dense foods, to get them up to the and for some people as i said here it's something that's new in actual fact no it's an old thing it's been around for years so yes as you'll see today you'll see the instagram wannabe famous TikToker da 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 saying hey i can help you lose weight and you can still eat donuts well it's actually not that it's yes you can still lose weight by eating more but it's more of the right things within the right structure the right balance and the right protocol for you. And things like weight loss, fat loss, better energy, that all comes from working out what that is for you, but not necessarily following what I do. Within the performance protocol, we also focus a lot on getting you moving. So why is that? Because a lot of people haven't done anything for a long time. So working in your mobility, what you currently have, what you've lost, the aches and pains and niggles, we're trying to overcome that by you moving. And yes, it might be some exercise. It might be walking for 10 minutes a day. It might be a ruck. It might be, yes, I want to lift weights because I want to make you a little bit stronger so those aches and pains will go away by simply having a nice, a stronger trunk, a stronger core, a stronger support structure to all those ligaments and tendons, bones, bits and pieces that are in this thing that we call the human body. But also to the moving part for me is one way where we can also have an impact on your daily calorie expenditure. In other words, using more calories versus just eating less calories. And that's what we have a look at this thing here. So in, a, in an, any given day, our body and our calorie usage and our consumption is based upon these four main blocks your resting metabolic rate, the amount of calories that you need based upon you, where you are today, your height, your age, your weight, blah, 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 just to keep you alive. That's how much you should be eating. The thermic effect of food. So when you do eat, you also use energy within your body to completely digest, absorb, and distribute all the nutrients from that food and also push out the byproduct of waste 
in a day. So food has an effect on your calorie expenditure. The other two areas, and this is typically what we see when people aren't doing that much of these, is yes, the exercise thing, but then what we call NEAT, so the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. It sounds like a lot, but basically that is the getting up, the moving around, the bending over, the doing the work, the washing the distance, the sweeping the floor, all of the stuff that you don't consider necessarily exercise, but what you do in moving during the day can go a long way towards the energy that you're going to expend and therefore that's going to offset the energy that you're going to consume. From here, we then take this and what we call the long game. So we want people to understand this within our performance blueprint, what it means step by step to focus on not now, not six weeks, not 28 days, but longer down the path. We introduce them to the concept of what's called periodization. So if you're familiar with this, as far as weight training, it means you have a plateau, you'll come off, you'll come up, you'll come down, you'll get left, you'll do this. Okay, and you'll work through that. Periodization also applies to how you consume your food. So for example, in an in-season protocol, I'm say a football player, I'm eating to maintain, I'll say a high cardio output. When I come off my season, I want to be able to maintain that a bit. I want to dial it back a little tiny bit, but I still want to be able to keep myself relatively lean because my energy expenditure in a day is gone off. I come into off season. I'm typically back in the gym. I'm working on improving something. It might be strength. I might want to get stronger. I might want to get faster. And then I come back into the pre-season. And that means I got to start adapting the way that I've been eating my, my nutrition to get ready so that I'm ready for the season ahead. That's what we call periodization. Each one of those cycles, think of them like seasons, summer, autumn, winter, spring. And that what you do in each thing is slightly different. We're not just dieting all year round. Go back to that last slide. That's what it means to become metabolically adapted. And then as we do this, we also dial in what we call the mental aspect, or I call it mentalize, where we start to break the cycle of going, yeah, okay, I don't have to diet again. I'm no longer diet hopping. I'm not jumping in the fads. I know this works for me. It's worked for me in my in-season it's worked pre-season, it's post-season, and in my off-season, I can do the same thing too. And I know that I've got all this back in, I'm optimizing my life, it's working for me. And therefore, that's a lot of this stuff that's up here. Plus, we also don't get caught up in what we call the hangry basket, which you typically see when someone is going straight into some form of weight loss or fat loss protocol. They're always hungry, blah, 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 blah. We don't have that necessarily when we talk performance. So, yep, so that's it. So, as I said, I'm Dom McStraw, and I take the high-performing Gen Xer that classifies me. If you're in a 40 to the 56 category, I want to help you get back your lost athleticism. I want you to rebuild strength and regain your waistline because we simply find that they say the middle age spread by showing you how to do this with weight wasting all the hours that you currently don't have because we are all so busy. But there's also excuse. So, therefore, let's wrap this up. Those three things here, the metabolize, that's the gears, that's the engine that's fueling you. The mobilize, that's the picture of the kettlebell, the doing the work, showing you how to move, the exercise, the activity, and the mentalize, the brain thing, getting this understand clear, not getting caught up, just dealing with you and your facts are all part of what we call the Gen X performance blueprint. Now, there are three other ways that maybe I can help you today. One, maybe there's some free training. If you go here to this website, you'll see what I simply call the long game. It's part of what I've just described to you before. There's a bit more details. And on that page, there's access to some free training, stuff like this and this presentation. Number two, I've got a, a free group. It used to be called The Long Game. We're now calling it the Gen X Performance Blueprint. It's on Facebook. And again, it'll be a single source of information where stuff like this will all be put in. So instead of going from here to here to here to here, you can go to there if Facebook is your preferred go-to location. And finally, if you're ready to chat, maybe, hey, you think, Dom, you know your stuff, or you might be able to help me. As you see, you can go to the website and you can book a call with me. 
free obligation, no obligation call, just have a chat, let's work out if what we do might help you too. And also thank you for the time. And there are three things that you could also do to help me out too. Okay, one, give this video a like, a thumbs up. You know what you need to do. Whatever platform you're seeing on it, please subscribe to the channel or whatever page you're seeing this on. So if this is on Facebook, give it a thumbs up. If it's on Instagram or it's on YouTube, please subscribe. More information coming down the channel for you. And then finally, please, as it says here, please tell a friend. That's it. My name is Don McStraw. This is the Gen X Performance Blueprint.